to Yankee Chronicle. I'm your host, Abby Peel, and this is our final week of the show presented by Barton Insurance Agency. Their agents live and work here and understand how to protect what matters to you. They have access to the top insurance companies in the market. Barton Insurance focuses on finding the right policy at the right price that you both need and want. Today, Ben gives us his thoughts on how to assess your insurance needs and bundle them to get the best price. Lynn Clark will give us a lineup of Warner Historical Society events coming up this fall. We'll have coverage of a ceremony celebrating the 22 years that Emilio Canziabello served on the Kearsarge School District's board. And we'll close with the ladies of the New Hampshire Telephone Museum for a calendar of their fall events. Don't go away because it is September and you won't want to miss this week's edition of Yankee Chronicle. This program is supported by Echo Communications, a digitally integrated commercial printer and mailer located in New London, New Hampshire since 1997 with roots going back much further as the country press, AccuMail, and the home of the Kearsarge shopper, Echo Communications. Welcome back to Yankee Chronicle. I'm your host, Abby Peel, with Ben Barton of Barton Insurance Agency right here on Main Street in New London. Hi, Ben. Hi, Abby. So there's a lot of different parts of insurance, obviously, but I think one to talk about uh, that you you mentioned a lot of people are unsure about or just don't like to have the conversation on is life insurance. Life insurance is one of those topics that people just stay away from. And perhaps it's a conversation that is uh, demoralizing and and uh, a tough topic. Yeah, very so, tough. But uh, how important is it? Yes. Uh, you have a family, you have kids, you have a wife um, or partner, yep. what have you, uh, that is going to, going to go on living. And you need to plan the, the coverages for that life insurance uh, program just as you would an auto or home or commercial lines account. Who so, is the candidate for life insurance? Anybody? Yes, anybody is a candidate because more than likely things are going to, going to change in life. Yep. And if you're a young person without a home, auto, or, or but you're employed and you have plans, sure. then certainly you can take advantage of your, your young age and get lots of insurance coverage mm -hmm. for very little. It may, it may be something that is very well advised to, to take care of it as you are a young person. Yep. Uh, because we all change, and, sure. and our condition, our health conditions change, and it gets be becomes more difficult to, to purchase as our, our age and our health conditions uh, change. And why do you think it's such a tough topic for people to talk about? I think it's a psychology. I think it's a, it's a, think it's a morbid, it. yeah, con it conversation. But those who are thinking about their their family, and one of the very common uh, sales lines, if you will. And it's really not online, it's, it's reality. Mm -hmm. You buy life insurance because you love somebody. Mm -hmm. And you take care of them. Yep. And uh, I've had that ex example where I've gone to the home after a death in the family. Sure. And to bring uh, financial security to the family, uh, hugs and kisses all around. Right. Because that's a very large uh, piece of the of the security and anxiety level that a family member will face after a death. Because not only are you dealing with the grief and everything that comes with that, but then you have all these companies and businesses saying, pay me, and you can help them. Typically, uh, creditors are coming to collect your money, and a life insurance agent will come with the money to pay those bills. And yep. it's very reassuring that you've done the planning that's necessary. Plus, today, you can have discounts for on your home and auto by having a life policy with, with those coverages. And that's, oh. that's another reason to, to shop around and make sure you get all the discounts that are available. Smart. So a little bit of an incentive that if you get a life insurance policy, you see some benefits from other areas of insurance. And the, and the people that just buy the, the uh, least amount in, at, um, and buy term only, they, those term contracts are going to end. And typically, if you're 25 years old and you buy a 30-year term, well, do the math. You're 55. That's the last point in life you want to have no coverage available to you. 
Right. Because maybe maybe you have this change. So there's planning and there's there are products that can take you through all of that with an agent that, that knows how to ask the right questions. Are newlyweds a good uh, candidate for coming in? People that are just starting off life. Absolutely, yeah. because you're young. Right. Typically. And so it should be a combination plan of permanent insurance and, and the gobs and gobs of term insurance that I just said will end, but when that ends, your, your permanent coverage will, will continue on. And you purchase it at the, right, at the right time of your life. It's not when you're 70. Too late. Too late. Too late. <laughs> Too expensive. Yeah. Come to uh, you earlier. And plan and talk to an agent that uh, you can trust. Talk a little bit about liability, too. We talked about it um, before as well, but it's another important part to touch upon. Liability is the most important aspect of your financial security because that is your black hole. You don't know what kind of accident, uh, either automobile, slip and fall injury at the house, yep. um, dog bite, yep. dealing with that right now. Yep. Um, can't say it's not going to happen to you. Can't say it's not going to happen to you because we're here because it does happen to people. Right. <laughs> I do have to deal with that, it's not going to happen to me syndrome, but yes. trust me, these things happen. And so to have the liability coverage that you need when, um, when the event happens that is uh, unknown, uh, you've done the proper planning, and that would mean having a, an umbrella liability policy. If you own a home, several cars, uh, you need the excess, excess liability coverage to take care of that catastrophic event. And all these things you are happy to help people with. We can package them all together with the home and auto and make sure the pricing is where it should be so it's affordable. And, um, and you walk away with knowing that you have the security going forward. Yes, sleep all at night, drive, drive home uh, insured. And, and I'll think about all those problems. You don't have to. Hired. <laughs> Two o'clock in the morning. Give me a shout. Ben Barton of Barton Insurance Agency. Thanks so much for chatting. Thank you, Abby. When we return, we'll hear from Lynn Clark about Warner Historical Society's fall events. Please stay with us. This program is supported by H.R. Clough and Kearsarge Heating. Their full service model offers oil delivery, propane, motor fuels with design, installation, service, and maintenance of all types of oil, gas, and alternative energy systems, as well as air conditioning, water conditioning systems, and backup generators. Their highly trained and friendly staff will assist you throughout the process of buying, installing, and servicing a full line of energy products. H.R. Clough and Kearsarge Heating. Welcome back to Yankee Chronicle, I'm Abby Peel. Warner has one of the most active historical societies in the area. Let's hear what they have coming up. Hi Lynn. Thank you Abby. This year's exhibit at the Upton Chandler House Museum is 250 years of schooling in Warner and we're at 10 East Main Street. You can learn all about schooling from the earliest schools that were in people's houses in the 1700s. Through the era of the one-room schoolhouse, there were 24 in Warner, and, that, and ending with the closing of the Simons Free High School in 1970. The exhibits open Tuesdays from 1 to 4, Saturdays from 10 to 1, and we'll have special hours on the Saturday and Sunday of the Warner Fall Foliage Festival. Then join us for a New Hampshire Humanities program at 8 p.m. on Thursday, September 29th at the Warner Town Hall. John Harris from Franklin Pierce University will share his experience retracing the four-month journey of naturalist Edwin Wade Teal and his wife Nellie from the Florida Everglades all the way up to the White Mountains. Teal told of his journey in a book titled North with the Spring. Our presenter, John Harris, will tell us about the changes in the flora, fauna, and lives of the people he noted when he retraced the Teal steps. The program is funded by New Hampshire Humanities and is free and open to the public. On October 2nd at 1 p.m., Rebecca Corser and I will once again lead a Black History walking tour in downtown Warner. 
No two tours are exactly the same. So if you've been on one of our tours before, don't hesitate to join us again. We're always learning more about Warner's Black residents. To register for the tour, look for Sankofa Guided Walking Tours on the Black Heritage Trail website, which is blackheritagetrailnh.org. Artists will fill the Upton Chandler House during two weekend events in November. Meet artists, see them work and purchase their lovely work during Kearsarge Open Studios the first weekend in November. Then on the third weekend in November, we will have a two-woman art show featuring Denise Green and Terry St. Laurent. There will be Friday evening reception at part of each of these artist events. Holiday artisans will fill the Upton House the first weekend in December, and the museum store and barn sale will have lots of nice holiday merchandise and gifts for everyone on your list during Saturdays in December. Check our Facebook page and website for more details as these events come closer. Thanks, Lynn. Much to do and learn all around our region. When we return, we'll have coverage of a special ceremony that was held in honor of the 22 years that Emilio Canciabello spent on the Kearsarge School Board. Now these words from some of the underwriters that make your Yankee Chronicle possible. Please stay with us. Getting out of bed, bathing, getting dressed, cooking and cleaning are some of the everyday tasks that people often need help with as they age. And the Lake Centipede V&A team is here to help. Our homemaker companions, personal care service providers, and licensed nursing assistants are passionate about providing the care and support that keep our clients safe, secure, and as independent as possible in the homes they love. It's very rewarding but it's also my way of giving back. Um, I've had family members that needed the V&A and their services were wonderful. And it's just my way of saying thank you. I'm just filled with so much pride and I'm fulfilled to be able to work here, to be able to hang out with residents and patients like Helen, hear their stories, help them when they need help, has fulfilled my life in ways that I could never explain. Anybody who loves their home and believes in their home as much as I do. I can't, I, I, you can't imagine being any place else. It brings tears to your eyes when you think you can be in your home. If you're interested in a meaningful career in home care, we are interested in talking to you, even if you have no previous experience. Our entry level positions offer room for growth and our on-the-job training, welcoming culture, and supportive team are just a few of the things that make working here so special. Check out our website to learn more or contact us to set up a shadow experience and see for yourself what a career in home care is all about. Welcome back to Yankee Chronicle. I'm Abby Peel, your host. For 22 years, Emilio Canciabello has represented his town of Sutton on the Kearsarge School Board. As he bows out, let's hear these reflections on his service. I wanted to say welcome to everybody who came to have this little celebration um, for Emilio, who has been serving on the school board for since the earth cooled, <laughs> 22 years. And uh, I, I think it's more than appropriate to say thank you for, for your service and thank you for all the wisdom that you shared with everybody. Um, I, in my short tenure here, in my last seven years, have thoroughly enjoyed working with you. Um, and I know that um, Allison has worked with Doreen and, and past members to put a little uh, retrospective together and a little history together um, to just acknowledge your service. So thank you very much, Emilio. Congratulations, and uh, thanks for your service. Thank you. Thanks, Emilio. I'm just going to read a few words that some of us have put together, and then I do have something from Jerry. He, would, he wished he could be here, but he just got over COVID, and so he asked me to read something. But from the board, the school board would like to honor Emilio for his 22 years of service as a school board member representing the town of Sutton by presenting him with this engraved clock. 
Thank you for your 22 years of service to KRSD, and it's a very nice Simon Pierce clock that I'm not going to touch. Um, Amelia was elected to the board in March of 2000, so that was 22 years ago. He served on many committees and dedicated a measurable personal time to our district. Emilio started as a member when the late Dr. Tom Brennan was superintendent and the SAU offices were in an old house where the cupola now stands over there. He also worked with Jerry Frew as well as our current superintendent, Winfred Fenneberg. The facilities and transportation committees in particular were his focus, being an integral part of the passing and constructing of the high school second floor addition, seems like a very long time ago now, and the new middle school completed in 2008. Also, Emilio dedicated his time to countless meetings with parents in the Transportation Committee, evaluating and reconstructing our bus routes over the entire district. Almost every year, I feel like you reconstructed those bus routes. <laughs> Taking the time to ride on the bus routes himself and seeing firsthand where our buses traveled to transport our students. On behalf of the school board and the entire Kearsarge community, thank you, Emilio, for your dedication and service to our students and our district. And I want to present you with the clock but I think I'm gonna read Jerry's thing and then you can come up and we can shake hands and I'll present you with the clock. So this is from Jerry. Um, for all of you, or first of all, as your superintendent of schools in my seven year tenure in the KRSD, I could not have asked for a better school board to work for. From the initial interview and the board who hired me to the board in place at the time of my departure, it was an incredibly positive experience and the envy of many of my colleagues throughout the state. Emilio Canciobello played a significant role in that experience. Throughout his service to the KRSD community, Emilio was always concerned, dedicated, supportive, and a tireless advocate for the best education possible for the children of the school district. He always took pride in his Sutton Central School, but beyond that was a passionate and fierce advocate for the children of all abilities in all of the schools. He, is, his, he left his footprint, literally, I would imagine, somewhere in the cement on the Kearsarge Regional Middle School facility, mm -hmm. the high school auditorium project, and essentially anything, any facility related throughout the district during his tenure of service. In addition, his tireless dedication and work on the Transportation Committee would often find him personally at a bus stop with concerned parents and the Transportation Director trying to work out solutions to safety concerns while also protecting the integrity of the system and policies developed by the board. During his many years of service in contract negotiations, Amelia was always mindful of balancing the interests of the staff, retaining them, and keeping our district one of the most sought after districts to work in, while also balancing the needs and concerns of his Sutton neighbors and taxpayers of the district. He was always an advocate of integrity and accountability, both at the individual level and at the organizational level. Emilio often spoke of the hours he spent at the dump, or perhaps the PC term is transfer station, but to Emilio it was the dump, consulting with his constituents to keep a pulse on what they were thinking. Regardless of the issue or committee on which he was serving, and there were many, Mr. Canciobelio was always prepared. He had done his homework and devoted unimaginable hours of service to the KRSD communities to present fair and thoughtful discourse. I recall several occasions when Emilio and Chairman Dan Wolf might get involved in a very spirited ha 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 debate <laughs> during a meeting, but in the end, whatever the result, they could be found at the end of the meeting walking out together, laughing, joking, poking each other, and often determining whose turn it was that year to purchase the chicks they both raised chickens. <laughs> they did not always agree, but they always agreed that disagreement could be respectful, and it was. It would be safe to say that in his many years of service, Emilio had an impact and played a role or offered a perspective in every area of school district operations and the organization as a whole. In, clo as a whole. in closing, suffice it to say that Emilio Canciobello was a role model of a board member he always respected the role of the administration, valued and honored the input of his constituents, understood and respected his role as a school board member, and above all else, was dedicated to the success of every child in the district. His legacy to the KRSD has and will continue to be felt for decades. Thank you, Emilio, for helping to guide this district into what it has become. It was a privilege to work with you with deepest respect and much gratitude, Jerry Frew. So. I think you should come forward. You don't want to touch it? Yeah, go no. ahead and touch it. I okay, want I'll your touch fingerprints it. on it. <laughs> okay. That's his legacy. Presenting this to Amelia for his 22 years of dedication to our district. It's a beautiful.
If I could talk, I would say something. Uh, thank you all very much. This is this is amazing. Um, this district is very different now than it was 22 years ago, as Barbara might remember, and you and you, uh, yeah. Um, many things have happened, and uh, I recall that as I told my kids about the new changes and the new progress, uh, they all said to me, why couldn't it happen at my time? <laughs> so, you know, they, through the years, many, many things have happened, and I've been very proud to be part of it. I have ridden the buses. I wanted to make sure that I knew what I was being told was correct, and most of the time it wasn't. So <laughs> I learned a great deal there. But um, I remember a lot of things that, uh, about people who have helped me along, and I want to mention a few of them. I'll start from the left with Larry. Uh, Larry was there always when we needed things from changing light bulbs at Sutton to taking care of transportation, as we say in Spanish, solavaya, which means, I won't translate. <laughs> <laughs> it's yours, baby. <laughs> and uh, Doreen has always been there for my first day here. Um, and I always told her that if she quit, I was leaving. <laughs> so I anticipated you. And Dan, indeed, uh, what Jerry said was absolutely true. We were at each other's throats constantly because we disagreed, but we've always been friends. We've always worked it out and uh, because we all want the best for the district, and this is why uh, it always worked out. So thank you for your guidance and for your, oh my gosh. And Andrew, I can't say enough about Andrew because that auditorium is his. He built it. He spent millions of hours in that place. He was the one who actually made sure all the notes, nuts and bolts were the proper size and, and light bulbs and speakers and whatever else. So that's his baby. Uh, but during the building of the middle school, I also learned a lot about what to do and what not to do and uh, how to make sure things, uh, things get done properly for the kids. And that was all. That was, that was our goal. So thank you all. You get to play with that school now. So. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you for the administration. <clears throat> I can't say enough about, about what Winfried has done and what Michael has done with this administration and how things are going today. And I think it's uh, probably one of the best combinations of school board composition and administrating uh, composition working together. So it's yours. Thank you. Thank you, Emilio, for your years of service. When we return, we'll head down to the New Hampshire Telephone Museum to see what they've cooked up for this fall. But first, let's introduce you to another underwriter of your Yankee Chronicle. This program is supported by Main Street Bookends of Warner. For books, toys, games, cards, gifts, and a gallery of local art. Main Street Bookends of Warner. I'm Abby Peel, welcome back to your Yankee Chronicle. Every fall brings new activities around the region. One place we always visit because of their unique event is the New Hampshire Telephone Museum. Tell us what's up, ladies. Thanks, Abby. Hey, joining me today is our new member of the museum team, Megan Hurley. Megan's actually uh, just been hired recently, so that brings our staff up to a whopping three. <laughs> and um, we're very excited to have Megan with us. She's actually the education coordinator here. And I can't tell you how excited we are about that because we are oftentimes asked, do you have a lot of school groups? Do you have a lot of kids that come in? And while we do, now we're hoping to have more because Megan brings a whole new twist to our staff and we're really excited about it. 
So, Megan, can you believe how the summer has flown by? It has flown by. It's already, it's, well, it's not already September, but it will be September soon. Yes. And we have an awful lot happening at the museum. Um, we have Smithsonian Day Live, an owl presentation. That one's always a huge hit. People love animals. <laughs> uh, we have uh, actually a wonderful discussion coming up in September also with Katie Booth, uh, who wrote the book, The Invention of Miracles. That is going to be fantastic. We also will have an interpreter with us, which will be wonderful. So the more the merrier on that particular evening as well. And we also have a fundraiser at the end of the month, a bingo fundraiser. It's going to be Very so exciting. fun. <laughs> so, and that's just September. So, that's but amazing. we've got more going on. You've got stuff to tell us about too. Yes, also in September, we have our homeschool days that are coming up for homeschoolers in the area. Um, we'll have one in September, one in October, and one in November. And they're all with the theme of Alexander Graham Bell, which is our latest exhibit. Um, we also, I have a little Very replica. nice. Yes, my Very little. Very nice. <laughs> Pigeon. This is from one of our traveling trunks, which is a new program here at the museum for homeschoolers, for schools, um, people that can't maybe make it to the museum or want to extend their learning from the museum. And those are all, all of this information is on the website so you can check out the different trunks. We received a generous donation from Styles Associates from New London, New Hampshire. You can sign up and reserve a trunk, and you can also do the same thing for the homeschool days. So, Megan, if somebody's interested in one of these trunks, a homeschool group, how do they find out about it, and how do they get the trunk? Yeah, so we have a website with all of that information, or you could call us here at the museum. You could also email. Um, my name, mine is Megan at nhtelephonemuseum.org. Fantastic, and if anyone's interested, we are still open Tuesdays through Saturdays, 10 to 4. And of course, you are more than welcome to reach out um, by phone or our email at nhtelephonemuseum.org. Well, fun stuff and educational too. I'd like to thank Ben Barton and his great crew at Barton Insurance Agency for hosting us these last two weeks. You will owe yourselves to check them out. Join us next week for another edition of Yankee Chronicle, presented by the First Baptist Church in New London to hear about their mission in our community. Don't miss our live football game of the week on NCTV8 and at YCNnow.com starting Friday, September 9th at 625 as Kearsarge hosts Fall Mountain and on Sunday at 155 as Newport hosts Mascoma. Our live football games are brought to you by HR Clef and Kearsarge Heating, La Valley Building Supply, Barton Insurance, and Echo Communications. I'm Abby Peel. Join us next week at the same time from the First Baptist Church in New London for another edition of Your Yankee Chronicle. Stay safe, everyone. This program is supported by HR Clef and Kearsarge Heating. Their full service model offers oil delivery, propane, motor fuels with design, installation, service, and maintenance of all types of oil, gas, and alternative energy systems, as well as air conditioning, water conditioning systems, and backup generators. Their highly trained and friendly staff will assist you throughout the process of buying, installing, and servicing a full line of energy products. HR Clough and Kearsarge Heating. Echo Communications a digitally integrated commercial printer and mailer located in New London, New Hampshire since 1997 with roots going back much further as the Country Press, AccuMail, and the home of the Kearsarge Shopper. Echo Communications. Main Street Bookends of Warner. For books, toys, games, cards, gifts, and a gallery of local art. Main Street Bookends of Warner. The Intertown Record, your weekly hometown community newspaper covering the Kearsarge-Sunapee-Sunshine region of New Hampshire. The Intertown Record.